Oh, hi everyone. Welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. For today's video, it's going to be a quick one. I just want to take apart this Commodore 128D keyboard, see if we can get this fixed up by swapping some parts around from that other parts keyboard. Let's get right to it. So I'm very curious to know, is this just a standard 128 keyboard in here or is it different? Let's crack this open and take a look. Ooh, there's a lot of uh, like sand noise in here. Always check under your feet. That's good advice for life. Let's use an X-Acto knife to cut away. I found the little rubber foot that came off. So I'll just use some double-sided adhesive to reapply it. Yeah, standard Phillips head under there. All right, I'm gonna remove the other feet and won't show you that because it's gonna be a little bit tedious cutting them away, but I'll get this taken apart. So those six screws came out without much protest. And there you go. So it's kind of coming apart, but something is holding it together. There we go, it was just the grommet on the cable. The lower deck is in good shape. I don't see any evidence of trauma. It just, it's a bit dirty. Definitely this looks exactly the same as the PCB and the keyboard assembly from the regular 128. Of course there is a difference though. And it's the cable, which is soldered right onto the board. And on the regular 128, this kind of comes off to a connector which actually looks very much like the DB25 that we see here. But this cable is connected, so unless I wanted to take another keyboard and completely just resolder every single one of these wires, probably the easiest thing for me to do right now is just take a good keyboard from one of my other 128s, and I will swap the PCB. Let's see if this comes out. Okay, this, this metal plate has some more screws. There we go, this should lift out now. So as typical with the keyboard, uh, there's quite a lot of stuff in here. There are little bits of broken plastic and dust and a lot of little black bits. So this is gonna go over to the sink right now and I'm going to wash this out. Well, a good cleaning really made a big difference. There's a little bit of yellowing on the right side of the keyboard and if you notice I have a clamp on it, I was just trying to clamp the plastic so it would be a little bit more lined up than it was. Originally, this piece got pushed down quite a bit. It's strange because the crack didn't really make it all the way through the plastic. It's just really on the top part there, so I don't really get what's going on. I'm probably going to need to take this clamp off and try to squeeze a little bit of crazy glue into here and then clamp it back together. You just might be able to see in there how it's a little bit shifted. Now if I squeeze this down, by bending it, kind of pushes it back together. Let's take a look at the back of the keyboard. So the 128D keyboard has the cable that's permanently affixed to the PCB, while the regular flat 128 keyboard, which is this one right here, has the different kind of cable. It's still a DB25 pinout, but of course not compatible. So what I need to do is take this PCB off the 128D keyboard and just see if I can replace those little plastic guides for each key with ones from this spare keyboard. And of course, before I take this PCB off by taking all the screws out, I need to desolder the legs from these three switches. These are the toggle switches for like shift lock and caps lock. I had left them desoldered on this other PCB, so for, because I often take this thing apart since it's the parts keyboard. But let me go ahead and do these. The main signal cable is zip tied onto the metal chassis, so I just need to cut that zip tie. And I think this should lift off. Oh, I forgot there's a screw that grounds this cable. It's a screwed onto the metal chassis, so I have to flip this over carefully and take this screw off right there. Flip this back over. So now, it should come off. There it is. 
Okay, so I had a little bit of fear there was gonna be an issue here. The broken keys here, when they came up, it actually snapped this entire assembly here. And you see, this one's broken, that one's mostly missing, this one has a huge crack here. I wasn't sure if these were removable components or not. But when we flip this over, oh boy, look at all this. I forgot, there's a little tiny spring here. I forgot that sits inside one of these things here and touches the PCB. So the problem is, is I thought I could replace these, but you see they are actually connected to all these other ones. Maybe it's possible I can cut them and pop that out, but I don't think that's gonna be a good idea. I probably, I'm gonna have better luck by taking the entire metal backing plate out of that spare keyboard, which although it's in rough shape, like it's kind of rusted and everything, but I think that's gonna be the best thing to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop the switches out. These are the little caps lock switches. Pop those out. To save those, these are good. I think the ones in that other keyboard are, are very flaky. It's a good thing that this PCB is in good shape because this is the hard part to find. This and then the main keyboard body, the part I just cleaned. The rest of this keyboard here is actually the same across all of these Commodore 128s. This metal plate, the keys, switches. In fact, I have a couple other Commodore 128s. I think I'm gonna just take one of those keyboards. They're the flat ones and I have one that's in really good shape. I'm gonna take that keyboard and I'm gonna merge that together with the PCB from the D here and just make one really good keyboard because I, I care more about the D being a good, nice specimen over the flat ones, to be honest. Flat ones are pretty common. The Ds are less common. So this is my spare 128 keyboard. You can tell because it's very, very yellow. And unfortunately, there's a crack there and there and also on this key. When it's cracked, the little slidey part there, this is the shaft, basically the plunger rides through this it makes the keys bind up. I kind of remember that was the problem with this particular back plate, which is why I took it out of service. So that means that this, this particular one is not a good transplant candidate for the D. So this is the back plate from the yellow keyboard here. Very gross. I don't really see any kind of cracking or damage on the back. So perhaps with this cracking in the shafts here, I can just put a little bit of epoxy or something. Maybe just a little bit of crazy glue. I'll clean this up with alcohol. This literally moves quite a bit. See this? See how it moves? Ah, there we go. Okay, no, it's not missing a chunk. It's just bent way out of shape. Okay, well, you know what? I, what do I have to lose? I'm gonna try to crazy glue this. I'm just gonna start with some alcohol. It's really, really dirty. Just try to clean this up as much as I can. Okay, let me blow out the alcohol. So I got some crazy glue here, precision tip. You know, I don't understand crazy glue. You read the instructions, it says it dries in 10 to 30 seconds. I hold it for two minutes if you can. I held it for two minutes and then as soon as I let go, it just moved immediately. Is it not good for plastic? It says right here, bonds, plastic, wood, porcelain, metal, leather, rubber. I mean, I don't really understand. If, if you know what I'm doing wrong here, put comments in the comment section. I'm clamping this. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. I mean, at this point, I don't, I don't really care but how absolutely frustrating. I don't really understand what's happening. It's basically turning this black plastic, it's melting it. It's not actually gluing anything. It's just turning everything to goo. I guess I just need to throw this keyboard in the trash at this point. This is not gonna, this is not gonna work. All right, well, I'm gonna clamp it. And if it glues this piece of metal onto these keys, then so be it. All right, it's the next day and I left this overnight. These three had crazy glue on them and this one I didn't clamp I because it, it wasn't really 
bent out of shape. I just used JB Weld on that to reinforce it because it had a crack in it. I should have just used JB Weld originally and then clamped it with this stuff here. Now the plungers fit through these fine, but it's a little jagged on the inside. So I'm gonna take these little files here. I'm gonna find a nice round one and I'm going to try to file away the rough edges. Well, that seemed to have done the trick. The tops are a little ugly, but at least I'm not seeing any kind of rough round nubs and things on these anymore. Not bad, I guess. I guess it worked out. So this one here was especially bad. Let's put a plunger in here in a spring and we'll pop a key on. All right, so it's the wrong key. It's a little too tall, but yeah, that, that's actually working. Feels fine. And when I push on the edges, doesn't bind up. Not that it matters that much. I mean, how much we're using the numeric keypad, you're really typing on the, the main part of the keyboard more. Well, the fact that I am diabetic means that I have an ample supply of syringes. I don't use these types of syringes anymore, so I have a ton of them, and these are probably 10 years old at least, so probably no longer sterile. But these are perfect because they're 30 gauge needles, which means the needle is so thin, I can probably get it in between the crack there, so I can strategically apply some Sanacrylite glue. I can't do it with the camera so close up. I'm gonna have to move it out of the way. Sorry. Okay, I think that's it. I think there's Sanacrylite in there. Let's apply the clamp. Not really clamping. There we go. All right, it's a bit hard to see, but when I was pushing it, I had to kind of snap it into place. I, I moved it around until it went click and the torn plastic bits clamped. It's hard to see, but we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna leave this clamped. And now we have an old needle full of cyanacrylite. So let's cap this back up. I do have a sharps container, so this is going into that. So this will not make its way back into the waste stream. So these are the keys from this keyboard here. A lot of these are actually in okay shape, strangely enough. Oh, but the six has a snapped off stem, so that key is no good. The plus key had a broken plunger, but actually the key is fine otherwise. Then the nine key, same situation, broken plunger, and the key is totally fine. Six, yep, that snapped. Now three had a broken plunger, which I pulled off, and then the stem is fine, but it had a huge chunk that was also broken off on the side, and luckily, with a little crazy glue, it looks okay again. So trying to get to catch the light. You see there's a line there? So I put some cyanoacrylate glue on there and I clamped it with one of these clamps again. Left that for 24 hours. And the three key actually seems fine. And the reason why I had to glue this is because I didn't have any other spare three keys. That leaves us with the minus key, which has a broken plunger, but the stem actually is fine. I didn't pull off the broken plunger, but there's a huge chunk missing. So I could just leave this on there like that and it would actually be fine, but it's kind of ugly. But luckily I have a spare minus key that came off that, that yellow keyboard, that's in good shape. And I have a spare six, which also came off there. And with these two keys, that makes a complete set of keys. I just have to retrobrite these two and I can reassemble a keyboard and not have any missing keys. Here's a keyboard from one of my Commodore 128 flats. It's in pretty good shape, it's a little dirty. This is the one I'm going to put into the 128D keyboard. So to facilitate that, I just need to swap the PCB. So it's gonna need these desoldered and this swapped over. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all the parts, the parts keyboards and the 128 keyboard, I'm gonna turn that into one good keyboard. And that's what I'm gonna put back in my 128 flat. And just like that, the PCB comes off. So I'm just going to blow some air on this. So here's the PCB from the 128D. And I'm just going to spray some 99% IPA on this and I'm just going to wipe it down. A little bit of crap came off, not too bad. It's really nice of Commodore for <laughs> making these parts interchangeable. Imagine if the keyboard were somehow unique on the 128D. 
So all the screws are in, uh, and I'm just gonna make a second pass. I didn't tighten any of them, so of course I'm gonna put another zip tie on the cable, which was right here. That. Okay, so this keyboard's a little dirty, so I'm just gonna give it a quick clean as well. This is the keyboard from the D. It's actually a lot dirtier, and I was checking to see which one's more yellow. This one is definitely more yellow, although odd is the zero key is yellow there. The zero key on this replacement keyboard certainly looks more yellow than the one on the original D. There we go, zero key removed. I just like to be careful because if you pull too hard, you can yank and break this little, the little tabs here, or you can break the little tabs under the, the zero key there. So I just like to be extra careful. So let's see. It really is easier to get these off if the, if the nearby keys are taken off as well. So using Magic Eraser, we're just gonna focus on cable and get the scuffs and stuff off. You'd be surprised, like there's some scuffs here. Magic Eraser, bam! It's amazing how well this stuff works. It's, it's getting shredded, <laughs> definitely getting shredded up, but it's worth it because the cable will look new again. Look at this, look what it's doing to my Magic Eraser. It's completely shredding it. Don't forget this little strain relief area here. Well, the keyboard is looking a million times better. So here's the bottom plate. It literally just drops into the bottom plate. There's a couple standoffs that hold it in place, but it is it is the same metal plate that was on the 128 flats. I actually forgot that there are six smaller screws that go from the keyboard plate into this top cover. Okay, keyboard is reconnected. 1084 is powered up. Let me change it to video input mode. Computer's connected, let's power it on. Let's try and boot this floppy, which will not work. It's odd, it had an extra three on there when it booted up. Why did that happen? The three key's working, and so is that three key. Let's power the cycle of the computer again. All right, thumbs up. This keyboard is now working well. It does need some RetroBrite over here, plus the keys need a little RetroBrite. But otherwise, good. That was a crisis averted with this and a little bit of battle scars, but no big deal there. Very nice, thumbs up. But I'm not done with this video yet. Let's put together those two Frankenstein keyboards and make one more good working keyboard so I can put my flat 128 back together. All right, so the first thing I need to do is take all these keys off because this back plate is trash and we gotta move all of this stuff onto that other keyboard. So here we are with a repaired one. I think what I'm gonna do is flip this over, repopulate all the plungers that are missing, and then I'm gonna reinstall the PCB. 
And that way, when I take these yellowed keys off, all the plungers won't fall out and I won't have to reposition them. Okay, so everything is here. I just have to take the PCB off, put the plunger in for the M key here, put it back together and then take all of these orange keys off and put all of the good keys on. Okay, here we go. More unscrewing and rescrewing of the PCB. So this is the parts keyboard. It came from the D originally, this back plate, so it's got all the broken bits here. And I put everything together on here that I can. These keys here, I don't have any more plungers. This plunger actually has a stem broken off on it. It came from the D keyboard, obviously. I'm gonna put a screw in there and try to pull that out so I can actually put the restore key on there. Cause... Ooh, that worked. The little screw pulled the stem right out of there. So now I can replace that restore key. Well, there we go. Here's my Commodore 128 flat keyboard, fully assembled. The keys are from the 128D, except for these two, which came from my parts keyboard. And then the back plate, of course, came from the parts keyboard, keyboard as well, where I crazy glued the kind of plastic that was cracking here and JB on these keys and JB welded the one there. Everything seems to be good. I also, if you notice in the high speed, I cleaned all the keys before I reassembled them. This will need some retro bright eventually, but I'd say for now, I'm kind of sick of working on keyboards. Plus I can't retro bright. It's winter time in Portland or it's fall. So there's really no sun. So I'm going to do that in the summer. All right, it's always a little tricky how this little power LED thing works. And the 128 flats together. Let's see how this keyboard is working. Wow, you know, I thought that was gonna be an easy video. This is the back plate from the 128D. I thought I could just swap these plastic parts around on the back plate, but you can't do that. So it made the whole thing way more difficult. Out of this entire endeavor though, I got a very nice Commodore 128D thanks to Marcos and the keyboard while it has that little crack in it overall looks fantastic now. So it turned out to be a really good thing that I had this 128 flat lying around so I could steal the entire keyboard out of it and then do a whole bunch of gluing and swapping and moving around of keys and the parts keyboard is even more sad than it was before but that's alright. 
This is a parts keyboard and that's what it's for. Anyhow, I think I'm done with Commodore 128 for the moment. It's time to get back to some other computers. So if you found this video interesting in any way, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Of course, if you didn't like it, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs down button. You can put your comments and suggestions in the comments section below. You can subscribe for more videos. And of course, you can hit that little bell next to the subscribe button if you want to be notified when I publish new videos. And that's going to be it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.